What's going on? Mitchell Renz here from Chat Sports, and if you don't know, we're going to be live tonight for the NFL Draft, so make sure you guys go ahead and hit that big red button that says subscribe, and make sure you got a notification set, because as soon as 7 p.m. Eastern Time comes around, we're going to be breaking everything down around the first round. Now, what's coming up on today's episode? We're going to be breaking down the latest NFL news and rumors. I'm going to give you a little insight on maybe who the 49ers are going to take at number three, who are the Atlanta Falcons going to take at number four, and even more news and rumors around Jamal Adams and a potential Stephon Gilmore trade. The first story here on NFL Daily by Chat Sports, it's around the San Francisco 49ers and who they could potentially pick at number three. The report is this, Shanahan has preferred Mac Jones over Trey Lance and Justin Fields, and that's one of the biggest reasons why they gave up all that draft capital to go up and take somebody at number three. We've always known it's going to be a quarterback, and if it wasn't a quarterback, then honestly those guys should lose their jobs because let's face it, when you go from 12 to 3, you should know who you have in mind. The reason why this has been such a big story is because Shanahan was like, well, at first it was Mac Jones, but over the last few weeks, a guy like Trey Lance has caught up to him. My only question to that is, what has Trey Lance or Justin Fields, or really anybody for that matter, done over the last few weeks to catch up to Mac Jones? Really nothing. Now, when you look at the top five picks in this year's draft, everyone is saying that the draft starts at number three because I don't have a crystal ball, but I'm pretty confident saying it's going to be Trevor Lawrence. It's going to be Zach Wilson, and then the draft starts at three, and then maybe even number four with the Atlanta Falcons, which is why we're trying to break everything down for you all here. So here's a nice little quote on ESPN on the 49ers draft plans at number three. 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan, who ultimately gets to make the final decision here, has preferred Jones to the other two options since the process has began. But there have been discussions in the building about whether Lance or Fields might be the better pick, and Shanahan has kept an open mind and listened to others in the organization make their cases. This could go all the way to Thursday without a true reveal. All right, so what about this? We're going to look at the last full seasons for Trey Lance and Mac Jones. Obviously, Roll Tide, man, they were rocking and rolling this year. Over 4,500 passing yards for Jones, 14 rushing yards, but 42 total touchdowns, four interceptions. But let's not forget, because I get it, Trey Lance really wasn't able to play this year, and when you look at his numbers in 2019, 2,786 passing yards, 1,100 rushing yards, 42 total touchdowns, and zero interceptions. Very, very impressive. But I will say this, because a lot of times we're sitting here talking about like, who did they go ahead and trade up for? I actually think the biggest reason why the 49ers traded up was because they didn't want to have Jimmy Garoppolo as their starting quarterback anymore. And not that I totally blame them. Jimmy is a safe QB. But if you're Shanahan and you're looking around here like, all right, well, we lost to Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl two years ago. And now you're looking at other NFL rosters. You're like, man, our defense is put together. Our offense is ready to win now. And if you felt that the only thing holding you back was Jimmy Garoppolo – then that's why you go ahead and make this move. If they go ahead and take Mac Jones, I might sit here and be like, I don't know if that's what I personally would have done, but luckily if you guys know who Chat Sports is, we're an interactive YouTube channel. So I'm going to ask you this question here, and you know what? I'm going to make it the pinned comment on today's episode. So what does that mean exactly? When you come across this video, the very, very top comment on this bad boy is going to be, you got to pick one at number three for the 49ers. Are you going to go with Mac Jones type MJ or... I want you to type TL for Trey Lance. The next story here is going to be around Kyle Pitts, and is he going to be a new member of the Atlanta Falcons? Because after three of the 49ers, it's the Atlanta Falcons here. Now, this is from ESPN. The Falcons are expected to stay at number four overall and draft Kyle Pitts. I think that's pretty interesting because one of the teams that we've been talking about for weeks has been Atlanta potentially trading down, or there could be another NFL team that wants to trade up to number four with Atlanta and get them. Pitts, to me, is an absolutely phenomenal player. Personally, or not personally, previously rumored, Atlanta was going to pick a quarterback or trade down. So this is pretty interesting to me. The reason why I like this move is simple. You can't go wrong with Kyle Pitts. I don't know if he's the best player in this year's draft. He might be the most complete tight end that I've realistically looked at maybe in the last 10 years. This guy is absolutely sensational. Not only can he block, but he can catch. And I know we spent a lot of time on Jamar Chase, Devonta Smith, Jalen Waddell. 
He actually might be the best receiver out of that group. 43 catchers, catches in 2020, 770 yards. You can see the average on screen, 17.9, and 12 touchdowns. I mean, this guy is absolutely, totally complete. And then if you're Atlanta, with all the rumors going on with Julio Jones, I mean, if you move on from Julio Jones, sure, you still have Calvin Ridley, who's a very solid receiver, but then you're telling me you're going to trust Hayden Hurts. No disrespect to Lee Smith. He's just a blocker. But Pitts would really be able to help a young and trying to still up-and-coming offense because minus Matt Ryan and Julio, Atlanta has got a lot of question marks. And their first-round pick last year, no disrespect to A.J. Terrell, that was a little bit of a swing and a miss. Kyle Pitts, to me, I don't see how you could possibly swing and miss on him. So when I talk to Tom Downey, he's our NFL draft expert, and if you guys want to have the best NFL draft coverage, like, come on tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific. You got to listen to Tom break down every single player. He's absolutely insane. But he told me this. The three plans for Atlanta, either you're taking a quarterback at number four, maybe it's Justin Fields, maybe it's whoever the 49ers didn't take in, in Trey Lance and Mac Jones. You can trade down or... You can go ahead and take Kyle Pitts. So it's crystal ball time. What do you guys think here? Who will draft Kyle Pitts? Go down in the comments section and let me know. I'm a betting man, and I'm going to put my money on either the Atlanta Falcons or if Atlanta doesn't take them, I'm going to go ahead and say the Miami Dolphins because there's a part of me that believes the Bengals are going to try to reunite Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. So one more time here, I want you guys to go ahead and click that big red button that says subscribe and join Chat Sports where we will be live for every single pick, not just tonight. Like, we're going to be live in rounds two and three, rounds four to seven, every single pick analysis. We've been the number one most watched draft coverage three years, and here's my crystal ball time. We're about to be the most watched NFL draft coverage on YouTube four years in a row. Analysis every pick. Man, we've been working on games, prizes, and we're going to be a live and interactive show. We're even going to have opportunities for you guys to come on screen with us. 60K live last year at one point. The goal, I want to get to 100,000 people watching at one time. That would be an, that would be crazy here at Chat Sports. And it's 100% free. So one more time, hit that big red button that says subscribe. All right, let's talk a little trade information here, right? And it's still kind of around the draft. This one's around Stephon Gilmore, who was the 2019 Defensive Player of the Year on the New England Patriots. This is from Rossini. The Patriots could include Gilmore in a package if they trade up for a quarterback. Now, he is entering the final year of his contract, and this has been one of those dudes that's been tossed around in trades just realistically the last three, four, five months at this point. In 2019, he was absolutely sensational. That's why he won Defensive Player of the Year. 2020, had a bit of a wicked injury, and if you're New England and you feel like that you're still a quarterback away from really being great, maybe that's when you see somebody like if the 49ers don't take a Mac Jones. You're like, okay. San Francisco, one of your biggest needs is a cornerback, or the Atlanta Falcons, one of your biggest needs is a corner. We're going to trade all the way up to number four. And when you look at the numbers, like I get that he was injured, but if anybody is going to sit here and tell me that Stephon Gilmore still isn't a top 10 cornerback, I'm simply going to say, I disagree with you. So if you're Bill Belichick, you pick up that phone and you call one of these five teams. Because if a QB that you like ends up sliding down, no disrespect to Cam Newton. I think we all saw last year. Cam's a little bit washed up at this point. You pick up the phone, you call either Atlanta, Carolina, Denver, the Broncos, or you can go ahead and call a team like the New York Giants and say, hey, are you interested in Stephon Gilmore? We will give you him. We will give you our first-round pick, and then we're going to try to go up and get our franchise guy. Now, last season, 37 tackles, an interception, three pass breakups. He is a very, very talented player, but – he is over the age of 30. He is coming off an injury, so I do understand a little bit of uh, risk is going to be involved. The last person that we're going to talk about here on today's show is Jamal Adams, and could we potentially be getting an extension? GM John Schneider stated that they do have a desire to keep Adams long term, and shout out to him because he kind of was joking around a little bit yesterday saying, well, this is going to be our draft process. He had some cut out, you know, boards because if you remember, they gave up their first round picks. They don't have a first round pick. I believe their first pick in this year's draft is number 56 overall in round two. But when you look at it, I mean, Adams is a phenomenal player. A lot of people, you know, they're going to call him Blitz Boy, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he does his job very well, and he's realistically been able to get after the quarterback and been a solid run defender. But he is set for a fifth-year option off his rookie deal in 2021. So here's the quote Schneider had on extending Jamal Adams. 
We want him to be here long term for sure. He's a great player. Really glad we made the trade to get him. And he's going to be a very important part of our future. So here are his numbers in 2020. 83 tackles, 9.5 sacks, which is obviously really, really impressive, especially for a safety. 11 tackles for loss, 3 pass breakups. The issue is this. When you give up two first-round picks for a player and they play safety, I want a little bit more in terms of being able to cover. Here are his covered stats last season. Now, sure, you're going to see no touchdowns, pass breakups. They didn't really put him in a lot of spots where he could potentially get burned. But when you give up two first-round picks, when you're talking about Jamal Adams, he wants to get paid, and he's going to end up being... I actually think maybe the highest paid safety in the NFL. Would I pay him more than guys like Justin Simmons and Buda Baker? No, I personally wouldn't because I still think the NFL is one through the air. And Adams, that's not his strong suit. But I can also say this, he is really good at being able to get after the quarterback and edge rushers make a lot of money too. But at the end of the day, if you're Jamal Adams, you're going to ask to be put on this list. And I mean, and let's just face it, he is going to be put here on this list. Fill in the blank. I would pay Jamal Adams blank million per year. Is it going to be 15 million? 16 million? I mean, paying him over 16 million dollars, that makes him the highest paid safety in the National Football League. Now, 15 million dollars is a lot. And if you guys like a good deal for the low price of zero dollars and zero cents, you can watch our NFL draft coverage tonight. So again, hit that big red button that says subscribe, tune on in, and I can't wait to be able to break down every single pick tonight.